What is going on, guys? Pujo06241 here. Welcome to another sports vlog. It is Saturday, October 11th. The time is 9.41 p.m. And uh, currently, Michigan is playing Penn State, so I will not be previewing that game. It is 13-13. to -13. Both teams are having some offensive struggles here, so there you go. I got that out of the way. Uh, I know this one's a little late. I've really been cut for time here. I uh, Creepypastathon has kind of set me back uh, as far as these vlogs go. And uh, I had an alumni baseball game today, this morning, so my my focus was pretty much on all that. And, uh, in case you guys are curious, I went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and a pop fly in a center field. <laughs> Uh, but I did get an out in the ninth inning in right field. I did get the first out. So, um, yeah, go me. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started here. Last week, Rutgers uh, beat Michigan 26-24. to This just puts Birdie Hoke's job in even more crisis. But I got to say, this, this one was a bit controversial. And we're going to talk a lot of controversy here. Uh, I got another thing I want to talk about, but that... I'll get to in a minute. Anyway, uh, there was this bullshit play where uh, Gardner tossed it to a receiver, and the receiver caught the ball and ran out of bounds. But they tried saying that he that he dropped the like he landed on the ground and he dropped the ball. He clearly caught this fucking ball. He was just putting it down because he caught it. The refs did the review and they said, "Oh, it's an incomplete pass." And then Michigan went to kick the field goal to, I believe, to go up by one, and. They got blocked, and they, they just kind of ended up getting screwed. It's 16-13 now. Michigan over Penn State. Updates. That's what I'm for. Okay. Um. There was talk that Jim Harbaugh may not return to San Francisco. Now, I've heard that this is a load of crap, but if I, I do think if San Francisco fires Jim Harbaugh, Michigan should... Definitely talk to him about being their next head coach. Again, this is all assuming that San Francisco does pull the trigger, which I don't think they will. I think they'd be stupid to do that. So, yeah, that's that. Buffalo beats Detroit 17-14. to Detroit blew a 14-point lead, and all because Alex Henry is a terrible kicker. Now, the Lions released him the next day. I called this. I said they were going to release Alex Henry, and they're going to sign Matt Prater. What happens? They release Alex Henry. They sign Matt Prater. Even Jason Hansen offered to come out of retirement, and they even tried out Jay Feely, which I really think is cool. They they kind of explored their options, and they settled on Matt Prater. I think Matt Prater is probably their best option. Uh, he, was, he holds the record for the longest field goal in NFL history at 64 yards, which he did last year for the Denver Broncos. So I think the Lions definitely fixed their um, biggest issue, that being the excuse me, the kicking game. And uh, let's just hope they don't blow this next game against Minnesota. Uh, they're going to Minnesota. Here's a game preview. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can with this. Well, first of all, they got to make their field goals. And with Matt Prater doing the kicking, I think that won't be an issue. they got to hold a lead if they get it. Teddy Bridgewater looked pretty damn good in his debut for the Vikings. So they're going to have to contain him. But for the Vikings right now, they're going through so much drama with Adrian Peterson that I think it's just going to kind of bite them. I don't know. I just think the Lions can win this game with good defense. Maintaining a lead and making those field goals. Okay, the New England Patriots destroyed Cincinnati 43-17. The offense finally woke up. Brady, I want to say congratulations to Tom Brady. He finally hit a career milestone, 50,000 passing yards, which is damn good. I am so happy to see my favorite quarterback you know, breaking a milestone after all the bullshit, you know, the oh, Brady's losing it, Brady's losing it. Eh. And what's really cool about this game is it wasn't the Edelman Gronkowski show. Gronkowski had a touchdown. He did really good. Edelman had a couple receptions, but 
Amendola had a catch. Tim Wright had a couple catches and, and also a touchdown. Uh, Aaron Dobson got in. Vereen. Uh, uh, Steven Ridley, who I've given a lot of crap to over the past couple of years, which I really regret because Steven Ridley is a good running back. But the biggest problem with him last year was that he would fumble. And that's a problem if you're a running back. But nonetheless, uh, the defense looked really sharp. Darrell Rivas shut A.J. Green down. That's what I want to see out of the Patriots. Uh, they play the Bills tomorrow. They are going to Buffalo. This is a this is actually a battle for the AFC East because both those teams are tied for first. I think New England's keys to winning the game is basically repeat what they did against Cincinnati. Shut down Sammy Watkins. Pass the ball around at a good running game, and they will win this game. But they got to be careful because Buffalo has a good running game as well. C.J. Spiller is an absolute monster. As I said last week, uh, him and uh, Fred Jackson, though I haven't seen a lot of Fred Jackson, but C.J. Spiller is still a damn good running back. The Pats need to hold that running game down, and I think they can win this game. Last thing I want to talk about as far as football goes Kembrell Tompkins was claimed off waivers by the Oakland Raiders. Tompkins was placed on waivers by the Patriots, and he is now an Oakland Raider. I think the Raiders will benefit because, in my opinion, Kembrell Tompkins is actually a good receiver. And the Raiders have lacked offensive firepower. They got one of the worst offenses, I think actually the worst offense in the league. They've just been terrible. They just fired their coach, Dennis Allen, and now Tony Sperano took over. So there's that. I think Oakland definitely has a good receiver. And, I mean, they got James Jones, who's not great, but decent. And in my opinion, that's the kind of receiver Kembrell Tompkins is. He's, he's not great, but he's good. And I think Oakland made the right decision by giving Derek Carr more weapons. Okay, baseball. Tigers swept by the Orioles. And you know what? I uh, I was originally going to come on here and yell my brains out and just get so pissed and, and go completely ape shit because the awful, awful managing in this game for the Tigers and a terrible, terrible fucking bullpen. This bullpen fucked us over. And, okay, now that I've had a chance to kind of sit down and, and calm down a bit, terrible managing on Brad Osmus's part, you know, using Jabba Chamberlain two days in a row after getting rocked on day one, and then using Soria. After, again, getting rocked, where was Albuquerque? I mean, Albuquerque's been lights out, you know, lately. Well, he was. And in my opinion, he was he's a guy I wanted to see more of. I don't know what the hell happened, but you just didn't trust him, I guess. I'm going to go over some adjustments that need to be made in the Tigers offseason because if we have another offseason like we did last year, we're just going to be terrible. It's not, I don't see playoffs happening next year without the proper adjustments. All right, so this is a list of bullpen pitchers that are expected to return. Joe Nathan, Joaquin Soria, Al Albuquerque, Bruce Rondon, Lane Hardy, Kyle Lobstein, Luke Pekonen, and others that are expected to compete for a spot. Ian Kroll, Pat McCoy, Chad Smith, Evan Reed, Melvin Mercedes, which I really like, and Kyle Ryan, another one I really like. I don't have a problem with any of this. Who's expected to go? Jabba Chamberlain, Phil Coke, Jim Johnson, Joel Hanrahan. Kind of bummed about Jim Johnson going. I really, I actually liked him, but whatever. It is what it is, so... Now, who could they target in the offseason? Luke Gregerson, Andrew Miller... Andrew Miller would be a damn good addition to that bullpen. He was a Tiger at one time, too. Neil Kotz, which, not, not the best season. And Pat Neshack is the last one. So that's bullpen pieces. Now, there's more than just bullpen. Max Scherzer is going to be a free agent. He said he wanted to come back. That being said, do we want him back? I mean... 
if he's looking for a, a huge deal, something that we're not willing to offer him, then he's just going to have to suck it up and go. Because I think, in my opinion, six years, $144 million was the perfect deal. I understand why he turned it down, because it was the beginning of the season. He's coming off of a Cy Young uh, winning season, and he wanted to... Uh, he wanted to uh, pitch and see if he could possibly go for something better. He didn't really have a bad season, but he certainly isn't going to win Cy Young. So I think maybe we can get him back on a discount like that. But I'm not sure I really want him, to be honest. I don't I don't know. We'll see what happens. Also, Tigers got to get V-Mart back because there is no way in hell they're going to be able to replace his bat. And they need to go out and get a center fielder because... Ezekiel Carrera is not ready to take the everyday spot at center, and Rajay Davis is not an everyday player. They need a solid center fielder. Colby Rasmus comes to mind. He's going to be a free agent, but his his bat's kind of cold, so I don't know what you're going to get out of him. That's if they even go for him, but I think Colby Rasmus would be good because he's got wheels, and he's a damn good center fielder. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is just my opinion. But that's what the Tigers need to do. They may also need to get another catcher because Avila may have to hang the cleats up. He got another concussion in the ALDS against the Baltimore Orioles. It's a bad thing. Avila, man, don't 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 kill yourself, man. We don't we don't need that. I like you, but maybe enough's enough. You know, you can only take so much hits to the head. All right, let's talk hockey. The Red Wings started their season against the Boston Bruins on Thursday night. They won 2-1, to one, which I didn't really expect. I, th- I honestly thought Boston was going to win this game uh, because the Red Wings didn't exactly have the greatest offseason, but they showed some good signs in preseason. And something I saw out of the Red Wings was really good defense. They outshot Boston pretty damn good. I, I think it, at one point it was like 16-9 or something. And by the end of it, it was the Red Wings had almost 30 shots. And uh, the Bruins had like 17, I want to say. But the first shot that the Bruins fired at the net that they ended up scoring on, it was Patrice Bergeron. It was the only goal they ever got. So that's, that's all fine and dandy. That was the home and season opener. So that's cool. They won. Now, the game against the Anaheim Ducks just ended, and I'm still pretty fucking pissed. You want to know why? It isn't because the Red Wings lost 3-2. They lost 3-2. It's because of the way it happened. Ryan Getzlaff hooks Nicholas Cronwall, and then he gets the puck and knocks it in the net, and there was no hooking call. There should have been a hooking call. Bullshit. The fucking referees ripped the wings off, now the Wings are 1-1-0 and with only two points on the season so far. Fucking, what a load of bullshit. I can't stand it when a team gets fucked on bad officiating. And this was, this was so hooking. I mean, fucking Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, Daredevil, uh, Helen Keller could have saw all that. Yeah, I said that. They all could have saw it. It was fucking hooking. But, nope. Nope, the rest fucked the wings over, and they lost three to two. It was a good hard fought game. The Red Wings played their asses off, and I'm I'm pretty damn happy with them so far, but they got fucked. Let's talk some basketball. The women's USA team won the women's FIBA World Cup. Uh, they played Spain in the gold medal final, and they demolished them. I forgot what the score was. Sorry, but, you know, it is what it is. But they won. It's awesome. Go USA. Uh, The Pistons started the preseason. They are 2-0, and uh, I didn't get to see either game, but they beat the Bulls uh, barely. They had to go to overtime to do it, but they still won. They ended up putting a beat down on the box, so... Pistons are looking good, but this is preseason, and let's just see where we go with this. All right, last but not least, Tony Stewart is going to step away from racing for a few years. Uh, If you guys 
Uh, I'm pretty sure you all know this by now, but Tony Stewart hit and killed Kevin Ward Jr. when he ran out of the middle of the track. And uh, it's uh, it was a terrible thing, and I really do feel bad for Tony Stewart, despite not being the best, the uh, biggest NASCAR fan. But I really do feel bad, and I think what Tony Stewart is doing, you know, I really, I mean, my my thoughts, my sympathies, my condolences are with Kevin Ward Jr. and his family, and I really can't imagine how Tony Stewart feels about this whole thing. It was just, it was terrible. And it's, it's not something that anyone would, would enjoy. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Cujo06241. If you want to talk more sports or anything in general, uh, if you like what you see, you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Until then, have a good one, guys. This is Cujo06241, signing out.